Um, Union Battle Line, the fish hook line, starts at the base of this hill, goes in that direction, past that dome memorial that you see in the distance. This is the Pennsylvania Memorial. Goes up to that white building. That's the old cyclorama. That's why I pointed out early in our tour. Then it swings to the right. There's the Green Water Tower on Cemetery Hill. Yeah. There's a hill called Cope's Hill as well, but you can't see it because of these trees. So it, it goes down and hooks to the right. Mm -hmm. The Confederate Battle Line is the tree line past the last green field. Continues all the way until it disappears behind the high ground that right. we just came up and over. That's Big Round Top. Mm -hmm. Now there are 10,000 Union soldiers in Battle Line about 2 o'clock in the afternoon on July 2nd. From about where the Pennsylvania Memorial is today to the base of this hill. They're under the command of a major general from the state of New York by the name of Daniel Sickles. As soon as Sickles is placed in that position, he doesn't like it. The reason he doesn't like it, he's been given the only low ground in the entire Union battle line to defend. It's no fun to defend low ground in any war. And on his own and without orders, he breaks away from the rest of the Union battle line and he advances his men forward looking for better positions. Now, he's putting the entire Union battle line at great risk. The reason being is he's moving forward up to three quarters of a mile. Now again, he should have been in a straight line from where that Dome Memorial sits today to and include this hill in the Union defenses. Those were his orders. Instead, he moves forward of it. You look out there, you see two red barns way in the distance. That's how far forward Sickles moves without orders. His battle line starts at the right of the last red barn, then goes to the left past both red barns, through these trees in front of us, up and over the ridge line in front of us, placing his left flank in those rocks on the other side of that parking lot down there. That's Devil's Den. So you can see Sickles is not where he's supposed to be. Big time, he's not supposed to be out there. When Meade finds out about this, he's furious, and he sends a man to this portion of the battlefield, a man he feels he can trust and possibly correct the problem. He sends this man, this is Brigadier General Gilvin and Kimball Warren of Meade's staff. Now, Meade wants to get a, well, Warren wants to get as good a view as he possibly can of what Sickles has done, so he does what we do 148 years later. He comes to high ground to get a better view. He and his staff come riding up this hill. As they do, in their horror, they realize that Dan Sickles has left this hill unoccupied. There's nobody up here. Now, he gets very anxious about this. He climbs off his horse, climbs up on this rock. If you to do the very same thing and look over his shoulder, what he's looking at are the fields to the left of, those, of that white barn. And what he sees are 1,650 Alabama and Texas Confederates. But they're not heading for any, any of Sickles' positions. Instead, they're doing exactly what we just did. They're swinging around them. To do that, they're going to have to take on big round top. That's going to slow them up some. They're making for this hill. If they take this hill, where would they be? Behind Sickles and on high ground on the rest of the Union Army. Mm -hmm. He knows he better do something. He and his aides, they mount up. They go looking for Union soldiers. A half a mile to your right, they find 1,450 Union soldiers under the command of a colonel by the name of Strong Vincent. His first name is Strong, S-T-R-O-N-G. And Vincent is told to get up here and get up here as fast as he possibly can. It's now a race to the hill. Union soldiers win the race to this hill by five minutes. That's mm -hmm. how close it came to utter disaster for the Union Army. Now the Battle of the Round Top takes place on that little ledge to your left. You see a monument, a monument. Those evergreen trees were there at the time of the battle. Those are witness trees. And I showed you two other monuments when we're still in the bus coming up that part of the slope. That's where the Battle of the Little Round Top takes place. Union positions established. Five minutes later it's attacked. Confederates eventually working their way around to attacking both Union flanks on the hill. First Union flank they attack is Union left flank. About 175 yards in that direction, 377 men from the state of Maine, the 20th Maine Volunteer Infantry, under the command of a school teacher by the name of Joshua Chamberlain, are attacked by 650 Alabamans. It's one of the nastier fights at Gettysburg. In 50 minutes went to hand-to-hand -hand combat five separate times. The fight degenerated to men throwing rocks at each other. Finally, when the Union Commander Chamberlain realizes his men are completely out of ammunition, sees no support coming up for him, gives the only command he feels he can give, and that's fixed bayonets in charge. 200 men, that's all he can afford, will fix bayonets in charge an overwhelming number of Alabamans, and they are successful. At the point of a bayonet, they drive those exhausted Alabamans off that flank to secure that flank. But this hill was secured not by one bayonet charge, it was secured by two. Between that monument there and that monument there were 200 men from the state of Michigan. They would be badly beaten back by the repeated attacks of about 500 Texas Confederates. When the Texans are successful, they gain access to that ledge, they start pushing in the Union flank, they start pushing up the hill. Things do not look good for the Union cause. The Union right flank on Little Round Top has been turned. But fortunately for the Union cause, this man on the rock has not been sitting idly by. While all this is going on, he's been down in that valley. Warren has been down in that valley looking for as many Union soldiers as he can possibly push to the hill. And those Union soldiers begin to arrive. 
The first group to arrive were 535 New Yorkers, the 140th New York Infantry, under the command of Colonel Patrick Henry O'Rourke, who graduated first in his class at West Point in June of 1861. Anybody here know who graduated last in that class? Custer. Custer, very, no, Custer, George Armstrong Custer. The best and the worst of the class of 61. Anyway, O'Rourke has been told personally to get his command up here and waste no time in doing so. He's issued no orders for his men to load weapons. These, these are muzzle loaders. It took 20, 30, 35 seconds to load your weapon in those days. He wasn't going to take the time. He was going to get his men to the hill and then worry about the problem. And he comes up and over the crest of the hills where that group is down there on those rocks. He looks far and what does he see directly in front of him? Hundreds of Texans looking at him. There's still no time to load weapons. The only command he can give is fixed bayonets. 535 New Yorkers are fixed bayonets. Patty O'Rourke draws his sword. With the words, down this way, boys, he leads them in a desperate bayonet charge. Now against hundreds of Texans turning their fire upon them. In a matter of five minutes, a third of the New Yorkers are shot down, including their colonel. A rock got shot through the throat. He bleeds to death on this hill. But the New Yorkers do not stop. They're now all over the Texans. At the point of a bayonet, they drive the Texans off the slope to secure the flank in the hill. You know, the bayonet was not an overly used weapon in the American Civil War. Most soldiers used it for ten pegs and candle holders. But yet on the most important real estate at Gettysburg, and you're standing on it right now. Little Round Top was Lee's best chance here. Both Union flanks were secured by desperate Union bayonet charge. Now what happens to Sickles men out there? Well, <clears throat> uh, all those positions will eventually fall to the Confederates. Devil's Den will fall after 45 minutes of constant fighting. The wheat field will fall, change hands six different times, 6,000 dead and wounded. The Peach Orchard and the Emmitsburg Road, where those bar barns are, will all fall to the Confederates. But where do the Confederates, where do the Confederates push the Union soldiers back to? They push them right back to where they should have been in the first place, right back to the fish yard, where Meade reinforces the line. They do battle, and they force the Confederates to give up the fight. But they're only able to rally on those positions only if Little Round Top stays in Union hands. This is the anchor to the Union position, and it stayed in Union hands because of the Union bayonet. Fair enough. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I can only give you about five minutes on the hill. Five minutes.